Hi guys, so I'm starting 2019 with a draw this again, which I'm sure is no surprise to anyone, but I thought it would be a great way to get a finished piece at the start of the year, and that would be a good way to have a point of comparison, because you know how people do like those kind of art year and a review things, where they do like a compilation of one finished piece per month that they've done in that year. I've never actually been able to do one of those before because I'm so bad at doing completing finished pieces that I don't tend to have like 12 finished pieces from the 12 months when a year ends. So I thought this would be a great way to start off with a piece for January, but the aim is I'm gonna try and get one piece done per month at least, so I can do a nice year in review when the year is over. So in terms of this piece, I'm redrawing a really old painting of one of my original characters, Lila, and this is her as a princess, <laughs> I'll get to that more later, but things that I wanted to focus on for this redraw, one of the main things was movement. So I felt like the original drawing had so much potential, but it was just executed poorly. This is mainly because I was only 15 when I drew that first one, and I had no real concept of how to capture movement, how to capture like sort of flowiness to it, and I also didn't have a very good knowledge of anatomy as well, and that kind of held me back from capturing the look that I really wanted with this piece. So this time around, I wanted it to be really clear, this kind of flow, this motion of a twirl, as if she's mid, like, movement, as if she's either, like, just spinning, or she's about to walk ahead, or something like that. Um, so hopefully it does look like I've captured it this time around, but I do think I did a much better job at capturing that. Another thing that I wanted to focus on was the expression. I really did feel like the expression in the older piece was really boring and dull, like there's not much expression at all there, like there's a slight smile but her eyes look really, I don't even know how to describe it, like really dead and lifeless. So in the newer one I thought it would be cool to have her looking back at us and also combining this with the movement it kind of feels like we're following her into the forest or at least that's how I wanted it to feel like. I wanted it to feel very immersive even though it's just a drawing like you could be following her like you could step in and follow after her which isn't something I felt like you could do in the older piece because there was no real depth behind her as well. That was another thing I wanted to put more detail into the background while also knowing which areas not to keep detailed. So for example, the trees in the very background, they become very abstract looking and they become very light as well. And that is a way of just making them look further away. Because things when they get further away, they tend to get lighter. And if you look at the older piece, you'll notice that I had no concept of this. Um, so the trees far away in the older piece are actually darker, but having them lighter, like in the newer piece, actually creates a better sense of depth. And I don't know if you noticed from looking at the newer piece, but I tried to curve the trees inward, and that's kind of trying to create these leading lines that will lead the viewer of the drawing's eyes towards Lila. Those are my reasons for that in the background. And then another final and the most important part that I wanted to change this time around was the colour. So colour theory has never been something that I've focused too much on until I had colour theory classes at uni. And when it came around to doing colour theory, and this happened last semester, so at the end of last year, I was like, oh god, here we go again, like, everyone knows colour theory, we've done it in primary school, we've done it in secondary school, like, I was thinking, oh my god, I've heard this a million times, I'm not interested, like, I know this all already. But then our lecturer had us do all these different colour exercises, trying out different looks with tertiary colours, complementary colours, broken colours, things like that and just seeing how the same piece will look with different colours and it really kind of opened my eyes to how much you can do with colour and how much colour can kind of change a piece and draw attention to certain things and make a piece just work so much better. So because I realised that yellow, that there's sort of like this yellow gold dominant colour in the old piece, 
I felt like this could pop so much more. So blue and yellow are complementary colours because they're opposite on the colour wheel. However, there is literally like no blue in the older piece whatsoever. And even just adding blue on a multiply layer over it, you can see how much better this older piece looks just with that element of blue. So this time around, I definitely included a lot of blue. I still kept some purples and I kept some greens too. And they really kind of juxtapose with the yellow and complement the yellow. And I think it makes her stand out so much more because the colors just work better together. Or at least hopefully they should look a lot better together. So a little bit about the character, she's called Lila. I don't actually know why I drew her as a princess to begin with because she's not a princess character at all. She's part of my comic kind of story, which I am kind of still in the works of. Um, it's kind of been put on hold while I'm having my hectic university life and I don't really have too much time for my comic right now. But as soon as it comes out, you'll learn more about Lila and her character. But let's just say, I gave her a sort of complete overhaul. She used to own a sweet shop and now she's a bladesmith in the comic. So that's about the biggest 180 you could pull. <laughs> but she's a very important character because she provides weaponry to the Fallen Guard Guild of Warriors and also people like Ember, who's the main character of my comic. And she's Ember's best friend. So. I'm guessing that this princess version of Lila could be like an alternate universe or it could be like a little gift from Ember the dress because Ember's a princess so of course she's going to own loads of dresses and I thought that because Ember has fire powers she could have given like the dress an enchantment of flame and that's kind of why it has this kind of fire look to it at the very bottom because it is from Ember and she's enchanted it. And I thought maybe Ember could have given her the dress because she doesn't get the chance to dress up too often. And maybe the point of view of the painting is the point of view of Ember following her into the forest. So those are just a few ideas and concepts that I came up with surrounding the piece and what would make sense. And I'm really, really happy, especially with how the dress came out. I really wanted to make it look magical. And like I said earlier, I wanted to add to this kind of feeling of flowiness because there could be so much movement there, especially in a dress like that and one that looks so magical. Um, and the angle at, at which we're looking at her, I just thought it would work really well if she was like mid to turn or something. So yeah. I am very very proud of this piece and I think that I achieved what I wanted and I feel like I did capture a moment. Like it didn't feel like just a still frame and where she's just kind of posing. I feel like it feels more like there's a story behind it now which is 100% what I was going for um, and what I want to go for in all of my newer pieces as well this year. So <laughs> I'm very I'm very very happy with this one and I really feel like I also captured the magical vibes quite well in spite of the scary forest. It feels like even though she's about to go into this kind of scary looking forest because of the creepy trees, it kind of doesn't feel quite so scary because she's so lit up and bright. It's almost as if it kind of outshines the scariness of the forest. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was so fun for me to paint this piece. Um, it was just really, really fun to revisit it and see how differently I paint it now. And I am going to be doing an iPad Pro versus Cintiq video very soon because I've been saving up for ages and I finally bought myself an iPad Pro and I've been using Procreate on it and using the Apple Pencil. And I think I've used it long enough now that I can make a good comparison between the Cintiq 13 HD and the iPad Pro, which one I recommend more for digital art because obviously they are both very expensive and I'm also going to finally make a Cintiq review. If you like this video, please click the bell down below so you can be notified of my videos. I try to post weekly, but at university that isn't always possible. <laughs> and one final announcement, I'm going to be opening up commissions very soon. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys!